Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, the 10th of June, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerVIP.com, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in a sport where there has been the Easton Assassin, the Brockton Blockbuster and the coal miner's daughter. All great fighters. One of my favorite nicknames ever was the nickname Mike the Body Snatcher McCallum. Right? McCallum's a Hall of Famer. Great fighter. First guy to beat Julian Jackson. But what this nickname did is it actually helped his game. Understand, when a guy enters the ring with the nickname the Body Snatcher, if I'm a judge, I'm going to start appreciating the body shots. Right? Mike had other parts of his game. He hit you all over. But the nickname focused you on the body shots. And McCallum was a master. Right? Let me say this too. Opponents fighting Mike McCallum understood, just off the nickname, that they had to protect their bodies. And that would allow McCallum to go up top. Right? A guy gets hit in the ribs a few times. He's fighting the body snatcher. He starts to protect those ribs. Guess what? If the hand's down here, it's not up here. McCallum would go up top, take you out. Well, let me say, you have a body snatcher in the heavyweight division, right? We're in an era, and it's going to pass eventually. Don't assume tomorrow is going to be today. But we're in an era of long reaches, long jabs, right? Tall guys, 6'6", six, six, etc., who are hitting you from the outside. Even their power shots are straight right hands and things like that, right? Lead left hook. They're trying to take you out, knock you out with one punch, right? There are other ways of doing things. Dylan White is the body snatcher of the heavyweight division. Body punching at heavyweight, wow, really has gone out the window with these big guys trying to knock you out with one punch from across the street. Dylan White is that guy who, in the pocket, can take a step back or pivot to the side and then start ripping your body. Let me just say, Dylan White's game has four key parts. Great body punches. He really is a committed body puncher. I've put highlights from Dylan White's fights in my favorite folder here. Uh, just look at the body punches. right? And he mixes it up with uppercuts. In other words, he's that guy who knows as he rips the body, some guys are going to start to try to cover up and that's going to expose their chin. Uppercuts also give you the opportunity, if you're a great body puncher, of looking like you're throwing a body punch and then turning it up, right, so it hits the guy in the face or the chin. In addition to the great body punches mixed in with uppercuts, Dylan White has one of the division's better jabs. He has a stick on him. Understand, with Dylan White, the jab isn't really there to set the table, right? The jab at times is the main meal. He's not hitting you with the jab hoping he can then throw some long right hand. No, 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 no. There are fights where Dylan White gets on a roll and like Larry Holmes, like, let me include him, Errol Spence, right? Masterful Mikey Garcia performance that's going to stay with me. A Dylan White, if you can't stop his jab, is just going to pulverize you with it. 
right? He has one of the division's better jabs. He has excellent timing throwing hooks. I want people to look at how exposed Derek Chisora was in the rematch to the hook that ends that series. Right? Dylan White is a guy who can just, you know, in the pocket, just take a step back as you're lunging at him. He's accurate with the hooks. Right? Let me also add, too, that Dylan White, in part because he has a pretty good jab, has developed the back foot game. So you'll notice in the online video of him knocking down Anthony Joshua when they were amateurs, you'll notice it's Dylan White who's on his back foot, who's on the move. Right? Dylan White has a back foot. He has more of a back foot, quite frankly, than he's shown. Obviously, when he's on a roll, he doesn't really need to get up on his toes and dance and back up. Right? But just understand, Dylan White, if he has to, can do that. Now, the problem with Dylan White, and let's face it, we all have problems, right? <laughs> Certainly I do. But the problem with Dylan White is that, to me, he's too tethered to the pocket. Right? One of the reasons why he's able to land body shots is because he's that close to you. Right? That's why I felt that Joseph Parker would beat Dylan White. Now, let's be real here. I know Dylan White won that fight, but that fight's tainted. Right? That fight is tainted by a phantom knockdown. I'll agree. Parker gets dropped legitimately once in that fight. But there's a knockdown in that fight that shouldn't have been called a knockdown. Right? It's a knockdown of the Roy Jones, Joe Calzaghe variety. You remember Roy hits Calzaghe with the forearm. Calzaghe goes down. They call that a knockdown. Right? It's not a knockdown if the guy hits the canvas off of something other than a punch. Right? So, as I see it, the Joseph Parker fight's a little tainted. But I thought Parker would have more success against Dylan White. And let me also point out the sequence. When a guy gets hit with an elbow or a forearm and he goes down, while it's not a knockdown, the guy who got dropped is hurt. Right? He got hit with something. It just wasn't something legal. So one of the problems I have with the Joseph Parker fight is Parker gets hit with something, goes down, he's hurt. Now, you and I know, had he been hit below the waist with a punch, he would have gotten five minutes to recover. That's how seriously we take illegal punches. But because he got hit with something else and the ref missed it, instead of getting five minutes to recover, Parker had to beat a 10 count. Right? As it was, Parker then survives for a few rounds, is never quite the same. You get a hint of what could have been at the end of the fight when Parker drills Dylan White, and it's a miracle Dylan White was able to get off the canvas. I encourage people to revisit that. But I believe Dylan White is going to have problems against more mobile opponents. That's why I don't believe he beats Tyson Fury. Right? Fury's just too long. Fury knows how to fight long. Fury can stick a jab in your face from across the street, move away from you, never give White the opportunity to get close to his body. Take away that part of his game. Use length to avoid White's jab. Well, let me say, I don't expect that from Oscar Rivas. I like Dylan White over Oscar Rivas. Let me just say I've placed in my favorites folder the Rivas Bye Bye Jennings fight. Now I was surprised how shop worn Jennings looked in that fight. Jennings has an effective jab. But what 
Jennings was lacking were the things other than the jab. Right? This sport can really wear down a fighter. Right? Jennings really has lost a lot of the pep in his step. This is a guy, after all, who went the distance against Vladimir Klitschko when Vladimir Klitschko was Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Jennings is hitting Rivas, who's shorter but who is thick. In other words, Rivas weighs more than 230 even though he's a little above six feet tall. Right? Rivas, excellent athlete. But on film, I just don't see the Dylan White level skill set. In other words, this is a guy with a big punch. Right? He has an almost 70% KO ratio who really needs for the action to break down, who really needs for an opponent to switch off, to land his big shots. Jennings gave a subpar performance in the fight. I want you to look at the scorecards. At the time of the 12th round stoppage, it's a razor close fight on the scorecards. Razor close. Understand, Dylan White has a jab as good as Jennings, if not better than Jennings. But if Rivas slips through the jab, Dylan White is then going to take out his body. Right? The beauty of body shots is even when an opponent is smaller and agile, if that opponent sooner or later has to get in the pocket to trade with you, those punches land, right? The, the opponent's elusiveness goes out the window on body shots, right? I'm expecting Dylan White to force the taller guy, who to me only has one weapon from outside, and it's a, you know, looping right hand. I'm expecting Dylan White to be mindful of that right hand and I'm expecting Dylan White to walk Rivas into jabs, body shots, uppercuts. Right? Rivas doesn't have the luxury a Tyson Fury would have of not having to come inside. Of staying outside the pocket against a fighter who, quite frankly, has made the pocket Mr. White's neighborhood. So I like Dylan White in this fight. He's a fighter you need to pay close attention to now that Anthony Joshua has imploded. Right? Understand, Dylan White's only loss is to Joshua, professionally. Dylan White suffers an injury in a fight that looked promising. Right? It looked promising. That fight's also one of Joshua's best performance. Check out Joshua's body shots in that fight. Right? It's an open question on what happens if a Dylan White is able to get close to Deontay Wilder, a guy with a very thin body who really hasn't been tested deep inside the pocket. Right? So Dylan White is definitely someone to watch. A Dylan White-Andy Ruiz fight would be about as explosive as it gets. Because understand, both of those guys like to deal in the pocket. Neither guy, neither guy, would prefer to be outside. Andy's so aggressive, I couldn't imagine Dylan White trying to fight that fight on his back foot, even though Dylan White has that capability. Right? So Dylan White is a big factor going forward at heavyweight. I believe this is a statement fight. It's Dylan White's first fight after the Anthony Joshua explosion. Right? Revis, 
let's just say his biggest moment in the ring, in my opinion, was beating Brian Jennings. And I didn't think he looked that impressive in the fight. I thought his volume was down. I thought his enthusiasm got impacted by Brian Jennings' jab. And Jennings wasn't doing much else. Understand that stoppage comes in the 12th round. Not the 8th round. Not the 4th round. Right? So, I get the feeling Revis, despite a great record, great KO percentage, is going to get outclassed here by a fighter who has more than just a jab and who isn't shop-worn. Right? I'm expecting Dylan White to make this a showcase. I would not be surprised if Dylan White wins this fight by stoppage. I like Dylan White, the favorite, over Oscar Rivas. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.